Hi everyone, I'm Tasneem. Welcome back to Showbiz India. The Indian Film Festival of Los Angeles kicks off 15 years with the opening night gala and the film Lipstick Under My Burqa. And this year we're coming to you from its new home at LA Live in downtown Los Angeles. Let's go talk to the filmmakers and talent behind some of these exciting films that will be featured at the festival this year. Talk a little bit about how excited you are to be here tonight and to see tonight's film. So I'm super excited, super humbled to be here and uh, yeah, I came with to see uh, how the film is going to turn out tonight. Such a compact, warm and very uh, friendly festival. It doesn't feel like 15 years, uh, but at the same time I'm so proud of it. Um, and uh, I think that we have a very solid foundation after so long um, and um, you know, people know what to expect now when they come you know quality cinema quality presentation uh, very warm environment welcoming very filmmaker oriented so yeah I couldn't be more proud so your film lipstick under my burqa premieres tonight at IFLA how excited are you guys well it's very very um, exciting because uh, uh, you know Los Angeles is like the <laughs> capital of films in the whole world and uh, it's an amazing moment to open a festival at Los Angeles and a wonderful festival like uh, IFLA. I think uh, uh, I'm very proud and I'm very happy and I hope everybody tonight enjoys the film. It should be great. I'm a fan of Konkana San Sharma and love her work. And uh, it's great that these type of films are, are being made. I'm going to enjoy the film. It has been talked about a lot in India because Censor has banned this film. And you know, that is kind of a you know uh, thing happening in India nowadays. They ban each and every film. So anyway, but uh, the, uh, I'm going to see the film, and um, I'm very happy for Alankrita. It's a, achieved so much notoriety. How excited are you to be a part of a film like this? Are you talking about the controversy? I don't. I think the controversy has only got us more media attention, and we can only be thankful that you know it's brought into light what uh, the patriarchal society in you know in our country or in any other country would think about it. And it's nice that you know that the media is so supportive of the film, and everybody's writing such good things. And you know whoever watches the film comes out smiling, and they have like such good things to say about the film. So I think that's been a positive in this whole controversy. I think. The film that's screening tonight has been a bit controversial. Um, I think there were all sorts of bans and all, and I'm really glad I'm getting to see it here. I just sort of found out that it's been banned in India, so now I'm super excited to see the film. Um, and the filmmaker's here tonight, so that I'm looking forward to sort of hearing what she has to say as well. Yes, there's a lot of controversies. Yes, there's a lot of uh, uh, people talking, but they're talking great stuff. So even if this film is, is blocked at the moment to release, I'm sure that it will reach the audience who wants to watch the film, right? There's YouTube, there's networks, there's Netflix, I mean, name it, right? If a film is good and if the content is great, there's nothing that can stop it. And India is, is such a wide and vast spread society that we always find people for every kind of a film. So even though it's blocked, it's not the end of it. I mean, yes, they have their own uh, rules and regulations, but uh, a good film is a good film. I just wanted to tell a small little story about four ordinary women uh, from small town India who were trying to uh, chase their little secret dreams and trying to sort of find a little piece of freedom from within the claustrophobia of their lives. So I think for me I just wanted like people to spend like those two hours experiencing the inner lives of these women and feeling uh, their tears, feeling their joy, their sorrow, their heartbreak, their passion, their ambition. Uh, their defeats and victories and I think that's all that I still want from the film. I don't think I've ever set out to make a film uh, to crusade or any such thing. I think for me it's still that same story I wanted to tell and um, I feel because of who I am and uh, my politics obviously that is, the, I mean that has shaped and molded the film uh, but for me it's I just want people to empathize with those characters for those two hours and just feel their journey like feel like they've lived with these women for those two hours that's all you are a juror at ifla this year yeah. so what was that experience like you know i kind of just watch it and and try not to think about really like judging it you know i'm watching with a critical eye but the first time around i, I watch it and just enjoy it right just whatever i feel and whatever happens or whatever comes to me whatever comes to my mind i take note of it i just write it down immediately after i'm done watching but I try not to go in and look 
for certain things. You know, I'm not watch. I'm not watching. You know, from like an extremely technical aspect. Because I think part of movie, cinema, and art is how does it make you feel after you're done watching it or experiencing that that piece of art, right? And um, that's that's what I'm doing. So you recently appeared in the live action Jungle Book, which yes. was so exciting. Yes. What was that like? It was an incredible experience. I mean, I uh, getting to work with John Favreau almost every day. I did I did motion capture as well for that. So I was a bit I, I was on the movie for a long time, and just to kind of see where it started and where it ended was incredible. Tell our viewers a little bit about your film. So it's based on a one folk singer's life. So who dedicated her whole life only for the folk song. So it's a very means fantastic movie. I feel so. Everybody will love it, so because it's a true the movie, they will they can come to know about the reason, about our reason, where from it is, and about the culture, about the folk song. Actually, which folk song is very rare. You won't find find the oldest folk folk song anywhere right now. So that's why uh, this is the true the movie. Uh, you can get it. So it's a based on folk singer's life. It's a biopic. I am a co-producer of a short film called Disco Obu, uh, directed by Anand Kishore, who's my brother. Uh, the film is about uh, an auto rickshaw driver in India uh, who is interviewed by a couple of journalists uh, throughout the course of a day and, and how, in what events uh, span uh, during that time. So it's, it's kind of an uh, interesting take on uh, people and media and how uh, people interact. Hey, the film is very special. It is about uh, what is happening in India or you can say what is happening in the world, you know. It is it is about uh, polarization, it is about divide, uh, you know, that how every other, everybody is actually making their own uh, thing out of a little proportion, making it very big, you know, the kind of uh, problems every, uh, some countries are going on. So it is, it is about today's India, it is about, it is about in all this situation, what is the, you know, uh, the job and the responsibility of, of a uh, of a person, of an individual, is to is to not to believe in this. You know, is is to spread love and happiness. That is important. Here. Well, we end the opening night festivities right here. We hope you enjoyed it. And remember, the festival continues its five-day run until tomorrow night. So if you haven't yet, be sure to check it out.